I once read something about having an anxious partner and how he felt like he wasn't a partner, but more like a parent of a toddler responsible for soothing his partner's emotions. I see this in myself. When I'm experiencing strong emotions, I feel I have to do something with them. If I'm in a relationship, I reach out to my partner. However, I have seen this play out in other ways as well. I need to process it with someone and I feel like I need to talk with someone. There was more to that question. Let's see. Um, it's a long question, so I'm just gonna skip around a little bit. I know there was a time that I felt better equipped and was making conscious effort to give myself those things. So I need to love myself and treat myself like I'm special. I wanna feel like my partner is excited to be around me and wants to have fun with me. Sure. Mm -hmm. I know these are things I need to do, but I feel stuck. They were easier to do when I'm single and I'm not sure if this is venting or looking for suggestions or support. Okay, so what I would add to that is I think that we can also at times give ourselves permission to be in relationship, right? So it's not that you can't share your feelings with a partner and, and, and look for a partner to help you process them. That's kind of one of the pleasures of being in a relationship, isn't it? Um, so I, I, I don't mean to suggest that we need to be islands unto ourselves, right? That, that part of the joy of being in relationship is experiencing the contrast that it brings to us, but also being able to share in those experiences because oftentimes our partners can give us a perspective that we don't have. Um, it's, it's when it's really to the point where it is a self abandonment or where it is, or it, or it is to the point that we are handing over sole responsibility for our partners to manage our feelings for us that we get into trouble, right? So it's kind of, it's, I think this is, this tends to be something that individuals with insecure attachment struggle with. And that is that very much there's poles, po maybe polarity is the word all in or all out. Um, and, and it's hard to navigate that kind of space in between them that you can weave in and out of um, being, being able to share feelings with a partner, but not expecting them to necessarily manage it for you, right? Or um, being open to receiving something from a partner without necessarily feeling like you have to give back in equal measure because when someone gives, they expect to get it, they expect something from you, right? This is um, what happens sometimes that there's like an invisible scoreboard above the relationship, right? So I guess the first thing I want to say is it's okay to share your feelings with a partner and it's okay to look to your partner to give you some feedback on that. Um, I guess when, when it becomes a little bit not so okay is when you hand your, part, your feelings over to your partner and you expect them to manage it for you. Okay, um, and and uh, that's sort of an absolution of personal responsibility. But I don't see that, at least in this question, I don't see that that's what's happening. It may be just a confusion about what can I safely, and by safely I mean, um, what can I share with a partner without feeling as if I'm abandoning myself or without feeling as if I've handed them all my feelings over to them. And so from the perspective of a Rolling Stone, let's say, sometimes that's hard to know where the line is because our experience of emotional boundaries have been so um, confused, right? Uh, and, and sometimes it depends on the kind of background you came from. So usually when you have a, an experience of being more avoidant than you are open heart, it's because either you came from an enmeshed family background where you, your, your family members, parents, and or siblings just handed you all of their emotions and they were like, you take care of this for me. You caused this, you, this, you, 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 you. And it's like a deluge. And so, and so the sharing of emotions at all is interpreted as this um, uh, handing over of personal responsibility. And so that when you're in, a, you're in a relationship and you're playing around with emotional boundaries and you're like, I want to share my feelings, but I'm worried that if I do, then then I'm just reenacting that, giving it all to them, right? And so then there's a sense of, and so then that's kind of the, the avoidant mechanism where there's a sense of holding back because I'm afraid if I let any of it out, then it's all gonna come rushing out. And then that's gonna terrify not only me, but also my partner, and I'm gonna end up pushing a partner away. So I'm just going to hold it all very close to myself so that I, I don't have to risk that. 
But then the risk that you run is that your partner ends up feeling rejected, abandoned, or um, uh, as if they, they're not able to make a, a deep connection with you because they're trying to get at some of the parts that you're holding back so tightly. But the fear is that if you let it out, then it's all going to come out and that you will have, there will be a recreation of what was scary to you in the first place, right? So part of it is having a little bit of forgiveness with yourself and letting yourself reveal a little bit of it. It's kind of, when I think of it, it's kind of like a titration of energy um, because all those emotions have tied to them a charge and that charge gets stored in the body and, and in our synaptic pathways. So one way to kind of think about this and um, on YouTube, I have a playlist called Attachment and Spirituality, but all of you have been taking healing attachment wounds. So the course content and the modules that you are exploring, particularly the experiential modules, are exactly what I believe will help you start to titrate some of that energy because you're tapping into the body and you're also allowing the body to express itself, particularly through some of the more process-based art stuff that you're doing, right? And it's nice because it's starting to take it out of you. You're starting to externalize it. And once you start to externalize it, first you're taking a look at and you're, you're listening with the meditations you're doing. And then as it becomes externalized, now you're able to interact and dialogue with it in a, in a particular way. And that's, that's all that process of titrating energy. Now, the other thing that might be useful in, in exploring this kind of question is to think about boundaries and to think about what are my emotional boundaries? How am I expressing my emotional boundaries? In conversation, what does that look like in the way that I speak about myself? Um, in, when I'm feeling particularly emotional, how do I express my emotions while at the same time holding flexible boundaries around that? And oftentimes, um, well, it comes down to, to understanding your boundaries. So I have a, uh, I'll put it in the caption of this video, but I have a playlist on YouTube, YouTube called boundaries <laughs> and it goes through physical, mental, emotional boundaries. So that, and, and experiential exercises similar to the ones you're, you're doing in healing attachment wounds to help you start to understand that a little bit better. Um, but it is process, you know, it's not something you're going to learn in, on a, in one day and then be able to put into action. It's something that you will develop over time you know and the other piece of that is being able to understand what you are actually communicating so like the deep structure communications what you mean when you communicate versus what you're actually saying because sometimes what we actually say is more of a surface level expression versus what we're actually meaning so you know a simple example of that is um well, maybe I'll give you an example of like when it's not okay to, to, so displacement. Displacement is a term that describes when you have terrible feelings that someone else induced or that you felt as a, in a response to someone else's behavior. And then you come home and you dump it on your partner, right? So for example, you got yelled at at work and it made, it conjured up all of these feelings of lack of worthiness and inadequacy and humiliation. And then you come home and something that wouldn't normally lead to such a big argument, suddenly it, it, there, you're arguing about something, you're particularly sensitive because you've been criticized at work and maybe your partner says something that borders on critical and all of a sudden you blow up at them and your affectual communication, it's like you dump all of that on your partner. So that is when it is useful to have that observing self in, in action, right? To, to be able to have some practices in place that allow you to be aware of what's going on in your body because probably you had a lot going on in your body if your boss was yelling at you. It was probably all this charge going on. Your throat closes up, your stomach's in knots, you've got negative perseverative thoughts going on. All of that is, is charge that it's expressing itself. And if, if you don't have a practice in place to help you be the observing self, to, to look at how that's going on within you and to find a way to organize and express it and allow it to move through you, then that's when you bottle it up and take it home and unleash it on your partner, right? So the things that you are learning in healing attachment wounds is a process for how to titrate some of that energy, right?